Here's another example of how to work and deal with energy released in the reaction. In this case, we're not looking for the energy released in the reaction because they tell you they're looking for the amount of the reactant that you need and not in moles but in grams. For example, here we have silicon dioxide, it's a solid. We're adding some hydrofluoric gas, hydrogen fluoride gas I should say, and that reacts to give a silicon tetrafluoride and two moles of water in the liquid form. The energy release in that reaction is 184 kilojoules. So therefore the enthalpy is a minus 184 kilojoules indicating it's an exothermic reaction, it releases heat. So the question is, what mass of hydrofluoric, um, hydro hydrogen fluoride gas must react in order to produce 1,035 kilojoules of energy. So how much of hydrogen fluoride do we need in order to have that kind of energy release? So you wonder, wow, how do I do this problem? But the thing is, you do it exactly the same the way we did the previous problem. You use the exact same equation. In this case, we're looking for, and let me use a different color here, the what mass of hydrogen fluoride do we need? So we're looking for the mass of the reactant. This is what we're looking for. So it's just a different portion of the equation. Now what we can do is just leave the equation as is, plug everything else in, and then we move the, the portions around of the equation until this is on one side by itself, and then we can solve for that. So let's go ahead and do that. So they give us energy released. Yes, they do, 1,035 kilojoules. So 1,035 kilojoules of energy is released and that equals the energy in the reaction, which is 184 kilojoules. Now, of course, positive because it's released. So 184 kilojoules per one reaction. Okay, now we multiply that times one reaction divided by the number of moles of the reactant that we're interested in here. Moles of reactant, what reactant are we interested in? Hydrogen fluoride. So we have four moles of that, so four moles of hydrogen fluoride. All right, now, mass of reactant, that's what we're looking for. So let me put that in red, so we know it stands out. So mass of the reactant, okay, and then we divide that by the mass per mole. Now, the uh, mass per mole for hydrogen is one, pretty well close, 1.008, but let's call it one a gram per mole, and for fluorine it is 19 grams per mole, so to combine it's 20 grams per mole, so 20 grams of hydrogen fluoride divided by one mole of hydrogen fluoride. There we go. Okay, now since we have everything there, now we have to isolate mass of the reactant, and the way we do that is using the following trick, the following technique in mathematics. If, for example, we have A over B equals C over D, so if we have two fractions that are equal to each other, we can move any item in any direction across the diagonal. So we can move the A and the D this way, we can move the B and the C this way. For example, we can put the D up here, so write this A times D is equal to, we can put the B up there, and we can bring the C down here. So notice how we can move things along the diagonal whenever we have two fractions that are equal to each other. Well, basically, we have the same thing over there, or I should say over here. So here we have one fraction left side equation, and if we draw a single line across, we have things multiplied in the numerator, things multiplied in the denominator, but we can move those across the diagonal to the other side, just like we did over there. So we're going to take the 184 kilojoules and move it down here. So we have 1,035 kilojoules already in the numerator on the left side. Then we bring that down over here and write 184 kilojoules down here. Then one reaction comes up here. So we have times one reaction. Then we have the one reaction over here comes down here, one reaction. Now we have the four moles of hydrogen fluoride that comes up here to the numerator. So four moles of hydrogen fluoride. And then we take the 20 grams of hydrogen fluoride divided by one mole of hydrogen fluoride that comes up here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we have uh, 20 grams of hydrogen fluoride divided by one mole of hydrogen fluoride equals, and the only thing we have left on the right side of the equation is the mass of the reactant. And that's what we're looking for. See how? How that works, we simply just move things across the diagonal 
up or down depending upon where they are over here. Now, let's see here. Kilojoules cancels out. Reaction cancels out. Moles of hydrogen fluoride, moles of hydrogen fluoride cancels out. We're left with grams of hydrogen fluoride. And of course, that's the mass of the reaction we're looking for. So now we need a calculator. So we have 1,035 divided by 184. And then we multiply times 4. And multiply times 20. And that gives us 450 grams of hydrogen fluoride. So 450 grams of hydrogen fluoride equals the mass of the reactant. And that's the answer because ultimately what they're asking for is what mass of the reactant must react in order to produce 1,035 kilojoules and it's 450 grams. So notice we used the very same equations with it before. We identify the unknown in the equation, which in this case was not the energy released, but the amount of mass of the reactant we needed. We plugged in all the other things that were given, and then we use this algebra technique where we can move things across the diagonal when two equations or two fractions are set equal to each other. So we moved the kilojoules down here, the reaction up there, the reaction down here, four moles up there, 20 grams up here, everything to the left side of the equation, and that equals the only thing that's left on the right side of the equation, and then you just use your calculator to find the number, and that's how you do that.